Hello everyone, my name is Adrian and welcome back to What The Pun. <laughs> How are you doing today? Welcome back. Basically today I am going to tell you if I'm ready to swap out the Golf R for the Peugeot E208 and go fully electric. So, going to give you my honest opinion on this card, the Peugeot E208 GT line. So basically, you know, I've been driving the car daily for almost a month. So this would be a full what the pun review of the Peugeot E208. So follow me, let's get started. Firstly, let's start off with the exterior, the styling of this Peugeot. Honestly, I don't have much criticism about it. It's actually not bad looking and the whole reason why I went with this amongst all the other EV options I had uh, from Onto's uh, subscription website. Um, yeah, it's basically because this looks nice. Uh, there's no chrome accents, which is always a winner for me because chrome is on cars it's not for me especially in this decade and the era but um the gloss black however used around the car i feel like it's very nicely done so overall in terms of exterior and styling i'd say it's a solid eight out of ten okay so the interior where do we start? So how about the first thing my body makes contact with when I get into this car, the seats. The seats for me, they are so, so like, I'm not like a big guy, like, and when I sit in these seats, they, I feel like they're very narrow, they're very small and tight. Uh, I think it's because of the, these bits here on the, on the side. They kind of just really squeeze you in and makes it feel like a very cramped, narrow driving position. And yeah, that for me just makes the seats quite uncomfortable. And on long journeys, these seats are also very so-so as well. Um, the, the materials aren't bad, um, but yeah, it's just it's just the the the, the shape of the seats. Just, just doesn't do it for me. It's not very comfortable overall. The gloss black used on the interior, though there's not a huge amount of it, uh, I'm still not a fan of it. Uh, I like it on the exterior. The, the, I feel like on the interior wise, over time, it's not a great look. It does attract dust so much so it's not a great look uh, the shifter the shifter it feels weird the way it moves it it kind of makes me feel like i could be piloting the starship enterprise just the way it, it, it shapes like a kind of like a phaser or stun gun or whatever and the way it just you kind of push it yeah you push it back and forth uh yeah um i'm it's cool, I think, but I'm not a fan of it. Uh, the positioning of it could be better, I kind of feel like, but I don't, but maybe because you don't need to always use it, then that's probably the best place to put it. Because if you're, on the other hand, you're in a car that's you know, semi automatic and you can still use the shifter to go up and down gears, then yes, probably a better, slightly higher so that it's closer to your left hand then it encourages you to shift but because this car you don't require it doesn't have that feature then it makes sense why it's a bit lower but yeah that i'm not convinced it's cool but yeah i don't need to feel like i'm driving a, a, Star, a starship enterprise basically so with this um with this entertainment system, this uh, touchscreen, uh, all these fancy switches, the, the volume dial, I, I feel like I'm 
still on the theme of the Starship Enterprise, Spaceship, Jetsons, whatever, whatever you want to call it, I still feel like this is uh, yeah, very futuristic and, and funky looking, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, with the car play system, I don't like it in this car. It's it's I'm, I'm probably I'm too used to the one in in my Mark Six Golf R because touch wood, nothing has. I've not had any issues with that so far. But with this one in the Peugeot, because it's a new car, I expect it to be, you know, a, a lot more reliable. Because I never had a problem with the one in my Golf, so why would I have a problem with a new car? So it's it's glitchy. Maybe it needs a software update. I don't know. But it is glitchy. It, it, it doesn't behave the way you expect. Like I'll be, you know, I'm, I may receive a message, and then it it it, it and and then it, it bugs out. It, it crashes and resets the system. It, it's weird. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it might just need a software update to address those issues. The other thing that's annoying um, is the 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 climate control system. I can't tell because you, you know you can adjust where the air comes from, whether it's from the the, the footwell. The, the middle area or the top area and I can't tell whether I have those bit, those areas on or off because I, I press the button assuming that I've turned it off but air is still coming out of that area so I don't know what's happening it's confusing but yeah in terms of you know interior wise my overall rating for this I would say a sensible I guess 3 out of 10 <laughs> so my rating for overall for the interior I'd say 3 out of 10 because the seats bug me the seats are is a deal breaker for me the seats and they're not comfortable so 3 out of 10 okay this car with 136 brake horsepower, 0 to 60, I think it was about 7.8 seconds. The way it delivers power is not slow, so it is quite fun. Just, you know, foot down, boom, it's just instant how it just goes from 0 to 60. I mean, it doesn't feel like 7.8 seconds, uh, and it, it just gives you a nice little kick. <laughs> And for me, that's about where the fun kind of stops because the way this car drives kind of makes me feel like I'm driving a much larger car. Why do I say that? It's basically when you're driving this car uh, and, and, and bends, turns, roundabouts, whatever, I kind of feel like I have to drive this car approaching a roundabout as if I'm driving a Mercedes GL. And for those that know what a Mercedes GL is, it's a very huge 4x4 basically. Uh, that, that's what this car basically makes me feel like I have to drive it uh, in terms of style. Because I, I don't know why, but I think maybe because of the weight of the car and where the battery weight is distributed that it kind of makes, makes you have to you, know, you can't approach turns and roundabouts, whatever, at a faster speed. You have to actually approach it quite slow because of how the weight of the car is. It, it makes it feel very clumsy, basically. So, about this steering wheel. Apart from the size being the, the smaller side of things and the shape being a bit weird, um, in terms of handling and performance, I do find this driving very light in terms of the steering. There's, uh, there's not much feedback in terms of the steering, so I mean, I, I, I enjoy driving cars that kind of give me that feedback and, and the Peugeot is so light, it, I feel like I'm, yeah, driving something in, in a video game basically it, it's so light I don't feel really connected to the road at all in terms of the, the experience overall it's fun in a straight line take it on a British B road then in that case so 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 for this 
I will give the Peugeot E208 for performance a 6 out of 10. Okay, so to sum up, I would say, am I ready to exchange my Golf R for the electric life with a Peugeot E208? What do I think? What do I think? So I would have to politely decline. Why? Um, for a daily car, I need it to give me good vibes when I'm driving to work early in the morning. I need it to be fun when I'm driving back home from work. I need my car to be comfortable because I'm going to be in it every single day that I be driving it. And in those kind of areas, I feel like the Peugeot is a bit mediocre. And also in terms of, you know, committing to owning a EV every single day, the thing that's holding me back is mainly down to the charging network. I feel like, you know, if I'm going to, I enjoy you know, long drives to the country, road trips, uh, driving out to the beach. And I feel like because, you know, most of these journeys will be of quite some distance that there's too much planning involved um, with the current EV network, uh, having to worry about in between these you know, uh, trips from you know destination A to, to destination B, uh, how many rapid charging stations uh, are there in between? Am I going, do I, how many times will I need to stop in between? And will I have any issues charging at some of these places? So it's, it's, that, it's that range, anxiety, and worry about if I'm able to charge my car on, the, on these long journeys. So that is the, a big thing for me, uh, is mainly down to the charging network. We all know there are going to be improvements. That, well, it, it's constantly being improved. So when the charging network is at a point where it'll make myself as a driver feel com confidence to, to go on long journeys, not having to plan so much ahead of these journeys, then we can revisit this this EV commitment. <laughs> so that's it from us this week. So I really hope you've enjoyed this series with the EV. If you have any suggestions for any sort of like video content ideas for the future, feel free to drop your suggestions in the comment box down below. Okay, uh, so if you've already, you know, not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button, click on that notification bell. Okay, so that's it from me this week. Take care. I'll see you next time.